I have decided that I'm going to do a reading for you from my new book. Uh, the new book, which is called Sensing Shades of Reality, is going to be very, very large. It's going to be a hardcover book, and it is uh, an annual, which means that it's divided into months, and the months are divided into days, but not for a specific year. And so each month will be a particular topic, and each day in that month is a teaching uh, about that particular subject. So, and e plus each month, each month will have a, uh, each month will have uh, a, a, an original essay uh, that will be the preface of that. So this one isn't quite finished. It still has a couple of rewrites to do, but I thought I would share it with you. Since you're receiving a Dharma teaching, this is the subject here. And this is the essay that is prior to the chapter on wisdom, and is called Gleaning Wisdom. Gleaning Wisdom. Sort of like in, when you go out into a field after the harvest comes through, and the, you get whatever is left. Okay, so how do we, how do we gather or glean wisdom? Hmm. Contrary to what some Buddhist scholars say, we won't need to know everything to gain enlightened wisdom. The only thing we really need is the Dharma teaching on our personal very next step to the awakened state. The only way to find that is to develop a spiritual homing awareness that alerts us to that, that very next thing needed in order to continue. How we discover that magical very next thing depends upon a development of an internal spiritual resonator. Problems arise when we overwhelm the true signals from inside ourselves by trying too hard to gather masses of random information. One method to respect and increase the capacity for clear resonation has been successful for many. It is the practice of sincere prayer to higher being to come into contact with the necessary teachings to become enlightened in this very lifetime. There are as many current needs as there are individuals, and the human wisdom-seeking inner mechanisms are of many kinds, intensities, and skill levels. For example, someone wanders into a Dharma teaching and wondering why they are there at all comes away with nothing. This might reflect a position lower on a wisdom-seeking spectrum of skills, but if something happens to fall on their deaf inner, deaf inner and outer ears, then good. On the other hand, some other person who wanders in equally wondering why they are there might actually have been brought by their inner homing device and benefit tremendously. Another method to further develop alerting skills is by attending a Dharma teaching and hoping that something is said something that is said will be recognized as deeper wisdom because they understand the potential. Still another might take the time to meditate before a teaching in order to have a more sensitive and spiritual mindset. Perhaps they don't even expect to become inspired by the teaching but are arriving with a more prepared mind. In other words, that person who meditated beforehand isn't as dense as someone who has been stressed all day. Instead, they are in a special receptive state of mind. In this case, what is seeking would not be coming from ordinary mind because the inner spiritual being is ready. Special long-term practitioners who have meditated extensively on a particular practice such as Vajrayogini, Manjushri, White Tara, Green Tara, or Green Light, are always alive to their practice. Even though they may not be as intelligent or even so highly developed as a spiritual practitioner, they are connected with their practice and request Green Tara or Manjushri like this. Please always be with me. Even if I don't hear what's going on, Inner Guru, please resonate for me and smack me on the head to let me know that something good is happening. Please watch for my sake. Watch for the spiritual riches which I may miss, and regularly do. This reliance acknowledges an alert function of the inner process, 
where inner guru or deity is not only invited but welcomed to influence. Resonation feels like this. While listening to a teaching, sometimes it is if you heard something and then suddenly it pops into another kind of focus and you hear it in a different and special way. Although this doesn't happen often, when it does, it is dramatic and a clear sign of having received a wisdom alert. Wisdom through hearing is a form of wisdom that can be developed further both by practice as well as by heightened motivation. It arises while intently listening to the explanations of Dharma spoken by authentic spiritual teachers who know the subject thoroughly. By finding ourselves in harmony with the teacher, it is possible to understand the deeper meanings of those words, even as they are spoken. Without this special ability, we can say that, although we are present in body, we are not so alert. During a teaching, we might even be talking to ourselves, such as, oh, that's very interesting. Oh, here's another point that I can really wrap my mind around. We could have different reactions toward a alert feeling coming from inside our own mind in response to what is being taught. The, al the alerting signal to pay deeper attention is quick and could go right past us and instead think, what was that? I wasn't paying attention. I wish they would say it again. This feeling can come over us while we are simply listening to the words. For many, however, opportunity slips past because of few cultivated Dharma perceptions capable of responding with appropriate heightened awareness. This might be because we have not meditated recently or because we are tired, worried, or distracted. For whatever reason, we don't feel an alive sense alerting, which is a genuine form of more highly inspired states of mind. What we want is to feel uplifted and inspired by Dharma wisdom with the power of correct resonance and with wisdom guiding us to the next thing we need to learn, we can never sink back into ordinary attitudes about Dharma, but can be uplifted by even the simplest of Dharma teachings. When we develop many evolved points of perceptions within our mind stream, we are capable of becoming familiar with inspired states of mind. Those who arrive prepared for a teaching this way are completely ready to be uplifted and to remain in that state for some time. They will also experience that which is unseen to outer hearing and mechanical understanding and actually listen to the real meanings, the inner teachings. In the same space where the teaching is happening, something else is present which is beyond words or ordinary meaning. However, words and meanings are important because they lead us into a place of inspiration where inner teachings are happening. Let me tell you a story here that actually does pertain a bit to our subject. While on my third teaching visit to Hawaii, I decided that this time I was actually going to go into the ocean rather than just look at it. As I watched folks splashing in the waves, I thought this was going to be fun. I was determined to actually go in, so not only did I wear my bathing suit, I actually took off the outer layer of clothing. There I was, ready and willing to go into the water, wearing bathing suit and no shoes. I went to the edge and put my feet in. Even though it was a bit cold, I thought, oh, I've got to. I continued talking to myself sternly. You've got to get in that water. This is crazy. You've got the right attitude. The sun is shining. You're dressed for it. And here's the ocean. Go for it. Meanwhile, people are running past me, leaping into the waves, looking quite happy. As I stood in the ocean, it came just above my ankles. I realized that because the very small waves are coming in and going out, the sand is shifting beneath my feet. I started to feel a little tippy because I really don't know how to catch my balance and nearly fell down because this darn sand was departing from under my feet. It wasn't fair, really. The water kept coming and the beach sand was now about five inches lower when suddenly I decided that I really wanted to go back upstairs. <laughs> With great determination, I climbed up the step of sand. Still not <laughs> well balanced, I proceeded to stagger around in the few inches of water. 
I was, while I was still wobbling around on the wet, shifting sand, it dawned on me for the millionth time that I am a whole bunch of Tibetan old guys who never had anything to do with the ocean. <laughs> give me a mountain. Don't give me all this water. <laughs> After I finally got back upstairs to the beach, I did not go back in. Okay, I severely digressed. But it is true that many people do come to a Dharma teaching with full determination to really be present and experience the inner teachings. They got washed and dressed up, drove here, and entered, entered the temple with good motivation. There's no reason that they should not be open to the inner teachings. They want not just words, not just meaning, but also the inner wisdom of authentic Dharma. In a way, the words in a teaching are like getting dressed or putting on your bathing suit. Well, the meanings are like stepping into the water to the best of your ability. Here's how to practice listening to inner teachings. It is a simultaneous process. One, listening to the words. Two, processing the outer meanings well enough so that they can be remembered later. And three, hearing the inner teachings with a receptive inner mind. As best you can, while listening to the words, gently understand the meaning of the words without stimulating presumptive thinking that can arouse a wrong interpretation due to a partial understanding. Next, by using the new perceptions which you have cultivated in your private meditation practice, try holding a more relaxed but alert level of your mind open to just absorbing the unspoken, energetic teachings of transcendent wisdom. It would be a pity to depart from an authentic Dharma teaching without having tried to swim a little bit in the inner wisdom offered. Just a bit more about trying to understand the meanings of the words as they are spoken. Often, beginning or even advanced students get caught up when hearing something interesting Stop listening and want to think about that for a while. Meanwhile, the teaching goes on and some things are missed because the mind is now listening to its own thoughts processing. The development of, Bud of what Buddhism calls quick wisdom helps in a new way to listen, partially process the meanings, and still stay with the teachings. Keeping up with the flow of teachings will eventually produce a more efficient intelligence as ordinary mind cannot digest as fast as dharma is spoken. Quick wisdom does not disrupt the flow of inner teachings to the deeper mind, to the actual dharma student. A part of mind can develop the skill to keep up and meanwhile the quickness of the intelligence increases. With this technique, of course, the student will not have enough time to process all of the meanings to their satisfaction because that part is done later and with more in-depth thinking. So, thank you. Yeah. This is a one, of, one of 12. <laughs> Maybe a little long, sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. 